Ten seconds remaining. And I mean, off the box goal. He was forced to shot the shot. It was youth and confidence that helped Connecticut narrowly escape defeat in the regional semifinals. Now the young Huskies are just one game away from the school's first ever Final Four appearance. In their way, the nation's top-ranked team and hometown favorite, North Carolina, a stellar team guided by classic playmakers, high-flying superstars, deadly shooters, and dynamic All-Americans. Tonight, one team is bound for the Final Four. Welcome to the Greensboro Coliseum, where a crowd of more than 23,000 is filing in, most of them are North Carolina fans. The road to the Final Four continues with the regional final in the East between the top two seeds in the region, the number one team in the nation, the North Carolina Tar Heels, against the two seed, the Connecticut Huskies. North Carolina beat Michigan State here on Thursday night by 15 points. Connecticut needed the buzzer beater you just saw from Richard Hamilton to survive against Washington. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us. It certainly seems there's a lot more pressure on Connecticut here tonight. After all, North Carolina is familiar with the road to the Final Four. They've been to the Final Four four times in the 90s, including last year. The bulk of that team is back this season. Connecticut has never been to the Final Four. That remains the major obstacle for this program to overcome. This is the fourth time to the lead eight. They've had two close calls under Jim Calhoun, most notably in 1990. So here they are again with another chance to get to the Final Four, but Bill Rathry, Jim Calhoun is really trying to downplay that angle. Uh, he's such a competitor, it does prey on his mind. He's trying to stay relaxed. He's trying to relax his team by going full court, a lot of pressure, a lot of open court basketball. He'd like it to be an open court game. He has a lot of people on the North Carolina team to worry about. It seems everywhere you look, they have a great player who can hurt you. Great talent. They pass the ball well. They cut well. They set up their offense well. They break defenses down beautifully. You can't fall asleep in the zone. They exchange inside. You think there's just a, a walkout, a screen away possibly? Well, they back screen the middleman. The wingman does not play Vince Carter. Coda on the money. They have a lot of people who can dominate down on the block. Jameson, they cover the weak side block. He's got a quick release, elevates, and in the open floor, Coda finds people. And who better to knock it down than Shimon Williams, a great spot-up shooter. Here are the starting lineups for Connecticut. Ricky Moore and Khaled Elamine, the freshman of the backcourt. Jake Bosco is the center. Richard Hamilton and Kevin Freeman, the forwards. And for North Carolina, Shimon Williams, Ed Coda in the backcourt. Maktar Jai. Vince Carter and Antoine Jameson are the forwards. The officials are Mark Reichling, Eddie Jackson, and Dick Cartnell. Reichling is the lead official. Richard Hamilton has had a sensational tournament for UConn. Khaled Elamine has averaged 23 points per game in the NCAA tournament. Hamilton and El Amin are the two leading scorers in the entire tournament. They've been the major focus for Connecticut. Bill Gutherich says they're much more than a two-man team. The other players don't get much attention to their quality role players. Well, he's impressed with Bosco up front. Of course, Ricky Moore, great defender, but what a lead guard. Colin El Amin, he's fun to watch. Connecticut in blue. Carolina in white. High heels have won six in a row. Connecticut 11 straight. And Vince Carter won the tip from Jake Bosco. The Connecticut Huskies are certainly going to go little bit. And you'll see a lot of zone, too. They're going to mix it up. Coda into Jameson, guarded by Bosco. They came late to double. McTire Jai crashed the board. Carter, a three that wouldn't go. And Bosco has the rebound. Can't give him too many opportunities. Great offensive rebounding team. Big part of the Tar Heels win over Michigan State Thursday night was rebounding. They had a... 18 rebound advantage in that game against the best rebounding team of the Big Ten. Hamilton thought he was fouled as he put up the shot. And this could be a backcourt. I thought he controlled the dribble. Freeman. Now it's Hamilton. Long with a three-point try, and Carter has 
has the rebound. Thanks, John. Both clubs concerned about the breakout, the fast break. Connecticut's concerned about the secondary aspect of Carolina's fast break. As always, when you play Carolina, you have to watch out for the lobs. Shaman Williams, the Tar Heels leading scorer in the tournament with a miss. Williams, the quick pick ahead to Freeman. And Bosco with solid rebounding and the kick out. Now Elamine settles, more than a minute played, no score. Running some stuff, using a little time here. I think that's smart against Carolina. Make them be patient defensively. Connecticut would like it to be an up-and-down game, but you wonder about their stamina. They've had players who have not been feeling well. They played a very late game Thursday night and were taxed all the way to the finish by the Washington Huskies. Another three-point try by Hamilton. And Freeman with the screen. They flare Hamilton. He's great with the puppies using screens. Two number one seeds have been ousted from the tournament prior to the final four. Connecticut trying to send a third number one seed home without the trip to San Antonio. Jai missed the turnaround. El Amin, an underappreciated rebounder. He pulls up for a three that's long. Goes after the rebound again. He actually knocked it away from his teammate Freeman. Coda missed a short one. Shaman Williams, which spins out to Ricky Moore. What a big time rebound by Williams. Williams had nine rebounds against the Spartans Thursday night, his career high. The Tar Heels have started out 0 for 6, and they're the best field goal shooting team in the nation at better than 52%. For Bill Guthridge, trying to get to the Final Four in his first season as head coach, after 30 years as an assistant to Dean Smith. 33 and 3, that matches the Division I record for wins by a first year coach. Matches Bill Hodges' mark at Indiana State with the Larry Bird team of the late 70s. And a 34th win today would tie the Carolina school record for a single season. Mm. Well, I mean, that's a three. How about the touch, huh? Nice little set play, pop out. He can play off the ball with Moore running the point. Important for Connecticut to start well in a hostile environment with most of the fans cheering against them. Anamola Okalaija and the follow by Jameson. And what happened is Bosco helped out and Jameson alertly got to the 10. Jameson has had four straight double-doubles. He's had three in a row in the NCAA tournament. More travel. Fast pace, both going up and down. Jim Calhoun has done just about everything he could do in his 12 seasons as head coach at Connecticut, except get to the Final Four and win a national championship. Bosco doing a real good job on Jameson, trying to deny the post area to him. Jai stripped, and here comes Elamin. Underneath the more, the shot altered by Carter, and Jameson controlled the miss. 6-2, UConn. Three and a half minutes played, and the foul underneath. Bosco a bit too anxious to establish good position on Jamison, and Jake Bosco, the sophomore from Katy, Texas, committed his first. Now, here's the difficulty, Sean. They had let that go for almost four minutes. The post-denial, the body rubs, all the suggestive positioning down there, and then they call it. It almost becomes a nickel-dimer after the first three and a half, four minutes. Little trap on the inbounds. Remember the lob. Don't fall asleep if you're UConn. Hold it. Now Jameson will take a three. The rebound by Richard Hamilton. Elamine off to Freeman for the lay -in. How about that for getting the trail? The old time. An impressive start for Connecticut. Shaman Williams. Oh, no. You know what makes him so tough? A tough out. He spots up without the dribble, and he can make threes or that kind of jumper to pull up Jay. Williams, a 42% three-point shooter, senior from Greenville, South Carolina, who's only scholarship offers coming out of high school, worked at Presbyterian College and North Greenville Junior College in his hometown. So he went to prep school for a year, and during that year, he caught the attention of most of the best programs in the country. Little zone here, they're very aggressive. Hamilton might have been deflected by Jai, who was in the face of Hamilton. Uh-oh. Oh, Jamison missed the dunk. Off the lob, 
from Coda. Hamilton looked very tired that time running back on defense. Alameda, wild miss. Williams was giving the signal. He wanted the lob. Jamison makes certain that the dunk stays down that time. I think Connecticut's got to pull the plug a little bit. If they don't have a good one, they're settling for the deep jumper. Run their offense. Carolina may be the best conditioned six people you'll ever see. Well, Jeffrey says he's not worried about the fact that he's essentially a six or seven man team because the players are in great shape and players love to play 30 or 35 minutes. Zone very effective. Now that's open. He's got to turn his dish or go himself. Jai the block as Bosco tried to go strong and Jai denied him. Running the floor. The big guys run as well as the guards on Carolina. This one a little yoke on the brow. But not to be denied. Get involved. Get back in the game. The next time a little magic. Send it in. Soft data bank for an interesting fact. Well, the win today, Bill Guthridge would become the third coach in history to take a team back to the Final Four for second straight season with a different head coach. Cincinnati did it in the early 60s, back-to-back -back years with different head coaches. UCLA did it in the mid-70s with John Wooden and Gene Bartow. And of course, Kentucky could also do it this season with a win tomorrow. Rick Pitino last year to the Final Four. Tubby Smith perhaps tomorrow. And boy, do they look good in their basketball game. Now right now, I think they got to establish something inside. Maybe give Jake Bosco a couple of touches. Settling for deep ones. And Caroline has helped them with their defense. They've been patient. Bosco. He can do it. they got to give it to him, though. Doesn't get a whole lot of touches, Sean. That's his first basket, and Connecticut reclaims the lead. Shaman Williams looking underneath, but... Jamison is well defended by Vosco, Carter, Coda, and Okulaj with the rest of the five for Carolina. A triple team, Jamison, and forced the turnover. Moore to Antrick Claver. Hamilton ahead to Jones, and Jones got called for his second travel. I think it's actually the third time in the game he's traveled, and he got away with one. That one I thought he made, but okay. Pivot foot and then the step, but the ability in here could loosen things up. You see, everybody turned around to help on Vosco. That's going to get the jump shooters going. On the other end, watch Jamison, Sean. As he posts up, you can see he's really a forward because mm -hmm. Jake is bigger and surrounds him. Then they got that double or triple, as you noted. So he's going to have to move his game out just a little bit. One of Bill Gunther's concerns, the press of Connecticut. The UConn employs some presses that they don't see during the course of the season. They have seen some presses from Maryland and Florida State, among others. Mm -hmm. And they looked at Merlin's tape, too, because that zone was effective against Carolina. Nice little pass up. Carter got it to roll in. Beautiful pass by Coda. His 259th assist of this season. That's the single season Carolina record. Alameen out to Moore. He'll try another three. And a whistle after the shot. This will be a three-shot opportunity for Ricky Moore. The follow through, how about Coda? Just does a solid job, not much room, and if he doesn't do it right away, look at it close, Sean. A little heat on the bounce pass, and then elevate and knock it down. And who better to get up there than the inside people of Carolina? That time, guard with Coda on the money. Okulai just fouled his first, the third against the heels in the first half. Ricky Moore to shoot three. He's a 74% free throw shooter the junior from Augusta Georgia the son of a PGA Tour caddy his dad Bucky carries the bag for Kelly Gibson a touring pro and you'll be down there checking things out at Augusta as well looking forward to that event as all golf fans do one of the great sporting events in all the world absolutely and right now the key for Connecticut with the press you got to make the free throw get organized and you also have to recover Carolina attacks pressure. Just one out of three by Moore. The game tied at 13, nearly midway through the first half. And Moore on Williams, nice little hedge. Williams, the follow-up. He's amazing. Goes up as high as he has to. And Freeman really didn't show big enough that time. Come on, Williams. Has seven. Alameen answers for Connecticut. He's the breakdown artist, the one guy that can beat you with the bounce. Jim Calhoun thought Williams bounced without dribbling and travel. There was no call. Coda snuck in for a tip in. Well, everybody's got to check out. Khaled Elamine forgot. 
Boy, he's really going for it, isn't he? <laughs> oh, let him get set. Alameen has 10. And he's guilty of the foul. Coda was about to blow by him, so Coblet extended the arm to slow him down and get called for his first foul. Now, sometimes you're just getting your feet set defensively. Jake trying to shape up in the lane and a little nylon delivery from deep. That's your point guy. That was from downtown Charlotte. Amazing his poise. Greg Gumbel had a wonderful feature about Coblet earlier today on CBS about all that he's been through in his life, married and divorced already, and the father of a child. But he plays with remarkable maturity, and Coach Calhoun says he has brought this year an exuberance that his team did not have last year when they went to the NIT. And in the zone here, he's got to he's got to cover right there. He do a good job as they get a good look. But how about when they come out on the floor? He leads them out. I mean, like a captain or a senior. Well, how deep can you get here? Jake with a good post up. Here, a strip to the ball will be with triple team Williams in transition. Back and forth they go here in the first 11 minutes plus. It's Carolina by one, and the Hull Hill fans are on their feet. You feel you're at the Smith Center? Yes, and Antoine Jameson said that when we chatted with him yesterday. He says it's just like playing in Chapel Hill. Nice reversal here. The Dean Dome. Bob no. charge. I thought he was moving when he picked it up. Carolina, big people. They're attentive to blocking shots, but they also know that's number two on uh, Jake Bosco. That's a, a liability. Now, Juan's coming in. He's going to have to play better basketball than he did earlier. He's got to contribute. They rotate Kleber, Bosco, and Juan. Well, that was a close call. And perhaps that's an example of the crowd helping and the officiator. I, I, you can be moving to pick up a charge, but I never thought he got the angle. Waco on the bench for two fouls. He's done a good job inside. And not that time defensively for you, Tom. And out, Bosco. Cole the dunk and a chance for three. You know what Bill Guthridge did? Jameson is not establishing an offensive game. So they slip Carter, who can beat you out, can beat you with the bounce, can duck in on the look at this one. He knows he's got the strength and the elevation. Hamilton gambles baseline side and send it in, Vince. Oh, Carter is a tough pill to deny. He can elevate with the best of them, and he's got that stare, Sean. It's like you when you get the check. <laughs> As I always do when I dine with you. <laughs> the foul on Juan was his first. This is the largest lead for UNC, four points. Freeman, a lot of contact and no whistle. Juan, a tip that wouldn't go. Carter, the rebound. Danger point right now for UConn. Carter shut off by Hamilton. He made the foul line jumper and hot dogs his way back up the court. Okay, that could have gone against him too, but that tells you how strong he is. Able to take the hit and knock down the jumper. Jim Calhoun's got to be careful. He's all the way out. He is really working the officials, Jim Calhoun, and it's going to be a 20-second timeout. I don't blame him. There was certainly a lot of contact at the other end, and there was a lot of contact yeah. on this play and not a whistle either time. That could have gone the other way, but that just is impressive. <laughs> He's saying, no, let it go, as he converts. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, you got to play through the pain. And in this case, the pain inflicted in Jimmy Calhoun's mind by some calls not going his way. And I feel for the committee people down at his end of the bench there. They can't blow the whistle, but he's chatting with them. Tom Jernstead of the NCAA office, Terry Holland on the... NCAA committee, John Swafford, our host, is the commissioner of the ACC, all sitting right next to the Connecticut bench and hearing it regularly from Jim Calhoun about the officiating. Out of bounds, it will be North Carolina's ball. And Coach Calhoun doesn't understand that one either. Full timeout in Greensboro. 
point lead for North Carolina late in the first half. Tomorrow on CBS, it's the ultimate road to the Final Four show starting at 1 Eastern. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will show you all of the March Madness buzzer beaters that at 2.30. Our regional final doubleheaders coverage begins with Rhode Island and Stanford in the Midwest. Scheduled for 240. And then the game in St. Petersburg between Kentucky and Duke takes you right up to 60 minutes right here on CBS. That Kentucky-Duke game at 5 o'clock from Tropicana Field. Nice post-century. Good defense by Juan. He extended the arms but did not commit a foul. And Jameson shot was Freeman. Freeman running the floor. How about Hamilton? You know, Hamilton's hobbled. He's got the flu. He got a bang in that thigh. He's not running real well, but what a delivery. And Freeman with the scoop. And Connecticut deserves credit. They were down in that 78-point margin, and it looked like it might be heading to an even greater deficit for them. Largest deficit was 9 at 27-18, but they've turned the momentum back around. Jamison scores inside. And that's all because of the flatness. No lob, so it's open. They read things beautifully to Hills. And I think Jim Calhoun's gamble to put Bosco back into the game when it was slipping away was a big move by him because that's right when Connecticut turned it back around. Now that he's back close, he's taken Bosco out of the ball game in the final minutes of the half. Juan an air ball on a swap by Okalaja as Freeman went up. Time for the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Points in the paint, 22 to 10 in favor of North Carolina. They had a dramatic edge in that statistic against Michigan State Thursday night as well. Check out March Mayhem, cbs.sportsline.com. Hamilton, an air ball from three-point land. Carter, this could be after that. Hold on, yes, I got a 10. Send it in. And that gets the house going, too. Shot clock at 10. Hamilton couldn't quiet the crowd. Rochamel Jones keeps it alive for UConn with one minute now remaining in the first half. They should take as much time as they have to get Hamilton running off bumps. Here he comes again. That's his game. And he thought he was hit. He gestured to the official that he was hit on the arm as his shot came up short. How unselfish is this team? Look at that cut and the pass. Right on the money. Well, you have seen an array of releases around the 10. That's one of the better ones, Sean McDonough. Electrifying. He's got a serious case of the hops. <laughs> Not bad for a guy who used to be the drum major in high school. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen too many drum majors to be able to do what he just did. Vince Carter plays the saxophone and trumpet. In addition to being the drum major, was the valedictorian of his high school class. Three bright men waiting for you at Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gumbel, Mike Kellogg, and Dean Smith. All the tournament news, the scores, and highlights. Plus, Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski will be joining our group. All coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Used to seeing those two in March, aren't you, Krzyzewski mm -hmm. and Smith? Brennan Haywood coming back in for North Carolina. Very impressive how they've been able, Carolina, to find holes in the zone. Connecticut can hold for the last shot of the half. The shot clock is off. Still in the zone, it looks like, in the back. John Okalaja alone down there. They're going to tag Hamilton. Let LME make a turn and fan out. LME to the elbow. Yes, time for Carolina if the heels hurry, but they were slow getting it inbounds. And uh, that long shot from the on half court would not go for Okalaja. Scintillating first half of action between these two teams and Vince Carter provided the most memorable moment with the dunk. The end of the first half. North Carolina 36, Connecticut 32. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith along with Penzo at the half right after this.